Hey, Board Game Geeks, Brian Hazard here. Going to be doing another video in my Then and Now series comparing uh, games that from the past that have been re-implemented or re-themed, brought up to the future, and to see how those games hold up mechanically and which version is the better one to go with. Today we're going to be looking at Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. This is a game that was put out in 20, I think originally 2012 and then reprinted 2015 again um, by Yastari Games. This game is actually, my camera does not want to focus, this game is actually a remake of a game from 1981 called The Consulting Detective by Sleuth Publications. So uh, we're going to go over the differences here between the games. I will say that my, mechanically, these games are almost identical. So this is just an example of a game that was considered great enough to be reprinted many years later. And you can take a look at that and we can sort of go over some of the differences uh, that we see therein. First difference, and not a small one, is the map that comes with the game. Now, in these games, the maps are not used to represent player movement. There are no minis or figures or standees or anything that goes on the board. The map is just used as a reference point throughout the game. And you use the map to, dis to see the locations of places that you might go in re reference to the case that you're working on. Um, so this is the map that comes with the original game. It's really big. It's beautiful uh, for what for its time. It's actually quite nicely made. It also has a little travel time here so you can see how long it takes somebody to get from A to B. That helps you to decide whether or not their alibi stands up or whether they really could have been where they said they were throughout the game. Uh, so this is the map that came with it. It is, uh, you know, decidedly old school. When there is color, that color is made of lots of little dots on the map. I don't know if my camera can pick that up or not. There you go. So it is a very old school, almost like a comic book coloring system. You see the Thames, Thames River is here, uh, uh, you know, lots of little blue dots. And this is the map that came in the original. Now the, the game that comes in the new Yastari version that we have right here is different. The first thing to notice, it is much, much smaller. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I don't like it. I actually prefer the big map. Uh, big, beautiful, brings theme to it. This one, Sherlock is the sort of brooding, gentlemanly type. This one, he's, I don't know, Jack the Ripper? It's very different. The, obviously the map is much prettier. It's got full color, it's glossy. Uh, doesn't sit down as good as the, the older one does. Uh, but it is just as easy to use and to see you know what? I take that back. Arguably, it may be easier to find things on the old map because it's much more spaced out. And uh, a lot of the, the places that aren't important are just white outlines as important. So this one has the black outlines. So prettier, but at the sacrifice of usability. I think the old map is a little bit better. So that's the first thing to compare it to. Uh, then, of course, there's the, the cases that the games come in. Now, the 1981 version, you also note that this map says 1982, so I wonder if I got a later um, printing of the game or something. Now, this is the deluxe version that came in 1982, which came in a leatherette bound binder instead of a box. Not sure why that's better than a box. Uh, it has held up decently well over the years. I don't, there's not really any splitting or anything on the binder. And the new version comes in your standard, uh, you know, board game box with the uh, flavor and such on the back. Obviously a little easier for people to, to see what's going on. This is uh, obviously a little better flair, uh, but there is, uh, of course, the coolness of an old game and the old way of doing things that exists here. So let's take a second to open these bad boys up and compare how they handled the parts, shall we? All right, let's start with the, uh, let's start with the old version here. And we've got our binder, which we open up and we see, as soon as we open it, we've got pockets full of stuff here, pockets full of stuff here. It's just kind of bursting. The map was actually folded up and in the back pocket. So uh, inside the binder, you have the clue book. On this side, you have your rules. The rules packet is actually very, very short. Uh, this is pretty much, uh, this borders on unreadable. It's actually easier to read this through the camera right now than it is in real life. Um, and this gives you the very basic, it tells you what the different pieces of the, the game are, and then it tells you how to play. Folks, the rules for this game are ridiculously simple. Here's how you play Consulting Detective. You read the case, get yourself a notepad or your Evernote or whatever you're gonna use. Uh, you read the case 
and you decide which part of the map you'd like to go investigate. So uh, your tr the game goes, you decide where you think you want to look next, you look it up in the book, you take notes, and that's it. Then you take another turn. But there's there's a little more to it. There's a little more to it, because a, a lot of the fun of this game is the immersion factor that it uses, that it has. So that's the basic rules. You can play it competitively, but it, 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 the way to play this game is cooperatively, either by yourself or with a group of friends, really trying to sleuth this out. That's where the fun of this game lies. In addition to the rule book, they also have the London Directory, second edition. So maybe I do have a second edition. Maybe they just called it that. I don't know. But inside this book is a directory. Yeah, there's 1982 again. So inside this book is a directory of all sorts of people that live in London. This is also a reference to the map showing you how the map is broken down, which, you know, there are red lines on the map that tell you that. And so here, it is like a phone book. It's a phone directory. So when, you're when you read the beginning of the, of the mystery and it says, well, maybe I want to talk to Mr. Uh, uh, Gertrude Coyne, who was mentioned in the beginning of the case, uh, and maybe I'll get a clue from that. So I would say, all right, well, let me look for Gertrude Coyne in the book. So I would go into the book, and I would just say Gertrude Coyne. There he is. He's at 86 Southeast. So I, uh, if I want, I can look on the map to see where 86 Southeast is. That may matter, too, because, um, you know, if the case says Coyne left this place and then, you know, walked home and was home in 15 minutes, well, I can see where the, where the you know, whatever the crime happened, where his house is, and whether or not that could have happened. Could he have walked home in 15 minutes? Uh, if not, then his alibi doesn't hold up. But this would tell me where his house is, so I could find it on the map. Uh... And once I find it on the map, I could look it up in the clue book and see whether or not it's a place that's referenced in this particular mystery. So that's the one aspect of it that's kind of cool. The book also breaks things up not only by names, but also by um, business types like docs, doctors, department stores, that sort of thing. Okay, So you have that. This is the case book. Let me say that. This is the case book. So this is where the cases come out of. So this is volume one, although I don't, you know, like I said, it's pretty hard to get any other volumes. The, this is, uh, it comes with 10 cases, which is also pretty cool, because that's a lot of mileage to get out of the game, because they, you know, they're not short, and they are very detailed. So, you get into it, this is where you read your case, I read my case from beginning to end, it tells me what I should be looking for, what kind of stuff there was, and then from there, I begin my, my sleuthing, and I take my notes, and I look around, and I try to find what I think, now, once I think I've solved the mystery, then I take out my quiz book. Uh, wait, 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 go back. I'm getting ahead of myself. The other cool thing is the newspaper archive. So the other thing you can reference while you're searching through the game to find whether or not you've solved the mystery is that uh, for each mystery happens on a certain date. So, for example, the very first case of the uh, murdered munitions magnet happens on March 20, 1888. So I'm allowed to look in the newspapers for anything from March 20, 1888. So I've got one, two, three pages of newspapers. Now, this is set up like a real newspaper of the time. So it's really cool. Uh, the theme of that is awesome. And you may find clues here. People may say things that disagree with what actually happened or dates that don't correspond or events that didn't really happen or, or not the way they said they did. So you can use this newspaper to find clues. The cool thing about the game is while you're solving the mystery, other mysteries might pop up that are related. And so you might want to take time trying to solve that or it may be related to the case and you need it to, to solve the case you're working on. When you think you have an answer, then you pull out the quiz book and the quiz book will give you questions to answer for, uh, for the case. It will give you two sections of questions. Ooh, I don't want to spoil. So uh, there's questions, and uh, don't look at that. Don't back up and pause if you don't want to spoil it. If you do want to spoil it, go ahead and back up and pause. So, ah, so these are the questions, and the questions are in two parts. The first part are the questions you need uh, to absolutely solve the case. And the second ones are bonus questions you can answer uh, that you may have come up with along the way. Then you score your game. There's, I guess, there's points for each uh, solution that you come up with. So here's the answer section, and it'll tell you how many points you get for each. Oh, I don't even want to look myself because I want to play the game. Uh, so it'll give you how many points you get for each correct answer that you answered, and then it will uh, tell you 
that you have to take a modifier, a, a minus modifier for how many turns you took versus Holmes. Uh, for, so if Holmes took 10 turns and you took 12 turns, then you get a minus two modifier times five, minus 10, yada, yada, yada. So that gives you an idea of how to get the scoring and how you solve it against Holmes. So that's the old version of the game. Let me just say that the game itself holds up very well. If they had never republished this game, if you got yourself, if you got your hands on a copy of the original Consulting Detective game from 1982, totally playable, totally usable. Minor typos, yes, but because there's so very few mechanics in the game to begin with, there's no old school things to worry about. It's very simple. Pick a place you want to go to. They call them clue points in this game. Pick a clue point, go to that clue point, make your notes, and then pick another clue point and just try to solve the mystery. These pieces, this the newspapers, the directory, and the and the map really bring something to the game that wouldn't exist there if it was just a matter of looking up the clue points in here and then finding the solutions and finding out whether or not you uh, did it right. I'm going to bust out the, uh, the newer version by Yastari and show you how it compares uh, to this one. Okay, so let's take a look at the new version from 20... 12 2015 um, and let's see what they did differently uh, the game it operates exactly the same whereas this game referred to clue points in the clue book uh, this game does not call them that they just call them leads or I you know ideas of where you want to go but uh, so comparison of the rule book right here the rule book is everything is prettier I guess let's start there the new game makes everything a little bit prettier same mysteries, I will say that, the munitions, the murdered munitions magnet is the first clue, uh, mystery here. And just like in this one, the game does come with 10 full mysteries. So good value, good deal, uh, good place to start. The rules are obviously a lot more handsome uh, than the old version. Although, to be fair, all these old quotes that they used in the old one, I really kind of like them. They're kind of cool. Uh, so we've got the object of the game. There's also a, a lecture that exists in here from Sherlock Holmes that tells you about all the different um, people that could help you out throughout the game that you could go talk to. So you've got all these people you could go visit. That also exists over here. It's in the clue book in the old version. So you've got uh, the lecture from Holmes. Yeah, see, I do like the old art. I will say that, I like that. Uh, so you've got the lecture and the introduction from Sherlock in here along with a summary that shows you the locations on the map of all these places that you could use as one of your turns to go visit them and see if they could help you out. That exists here also, but they put it in the rule book instead, which, to be fair, makes sense. It's a more centralized thing. And then at the, uh, at the end of it, they put it at the back of the book, that, that list of people you can go visit. This is like a game aid you can put off to the side. Once you start playing, it is highly unlikely you would ever have to reference the rule book in this game because it's pretty very basic uh, mechanics to the game. One thing that they did differently, the biggest difference between the two other than the art, is the way they broke everything out. In this game, they've consolidated everything into one clue book with all the clues for all the cases. One newspaper archive with all the newspapers for all the cases. Quiz book, all quizzes, all cases. Um, and then the directory, all, cl all, all uh, directorizations for all, all cases. Um, what they did differently in this one, and I don't mind this, this is, a, I think it's just a preference thing for which one you like more, is that for each case in the new version, you've got a booklet. And this booklet tells you it's case one, it tells you the date, and inside that booklet, it will give you the case information, which in the old version would have existed in the case book, right? And by the way, the cases are identical. Now, I haven't spent the time to go word for word or really check things out, but the clues, the mysteries, the solutions, I believe, uh, are identical. I have to imagine that they are. They didn't change much of anything else, so I don't know why they would change that. In the new version, you have a case book, and in that, or they don't call it that, it's just a booklet. You have case one, you have all the information on the case, including some nifty, uh, like a little dictionary entry and stuff. Now, I think this information itself exists in the old version, but not in such a handsome way. You see that, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, mark it's talking about different things in here, but they actually have like these um, illustrations here, which are kind of cool. And so 
the clues or the case is the same. Now you have the clue book of the old one. So in that one, it's all consolidated into one. This is each, now there's chapters in here, don't get me wrong. There's a chapter for each clue, case, and then within that there are clues related to points on the map. Same thing here, just uh, illustrated differently. I, for in this regard, I like this presentation better. I like the overall structure of this presentation better. So in this one, you have all the clues and stuff, and then at the end, you have, and I'm gonna to try to be careful about this, the questions. So instead of having a question, a quiz book, like in this one, each booklet has questions for its own case, and then you flip it over, you have the solution, we're gonna do this so you can't see it, but you can't tell the solution. And then over here, you've got the solutions and how Holmes did it, and the score, and the bonus points, and then you're done. And then for each case, you also have your a separate newspaper now this is kind of cool each case has its own full-blown like full page fold out newspaper clipping now the newspaper entries are for the most part identical they put them in slightly different order they reword they change some dates on things and i wonder if that's because they found out that tuesday was not actually march 20th in 1888 uh because here we've got march 12th wait no that would still work they just moved it back a week i don't know why that's weird now, just like the old one, the London Directory is consolidated. So all the cases use the same London Directory. I will say that the London Directory is different here because in the old version, not only did they have people's names in order, they also had, in the middle of all that, they would have everybody's names in order, but in addition, right in the smack dab in the middle, they would have categories for like types of business, banks and booksellers and and boarding houses and that sort of thing. In this one, they handled it differently. They put all the names up front. There's an entire directory of people's uh, first and last names. And then at the very end, you have uh, the businesses. That's one difference uh, that's in here that you can see. Those are very similar. The directories are very similar. Uh, what's cool is that, so I finished this case. I get this rid of this one. Here's 10 more or nine more. So I grab the next one and I've got my, my clues. My, I've got the, 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 the mysteries, the case the clues, the solutions, all that stuff in here, and another newspaper. And what I kind of like is that now I've got this other newspaper and you're allowed to look at older newspapers, so you could kind of take the, and now I have this sort of newspaper uh, file of, of old papers that I can look at and, and sort of pour over to find things that I need. The biggest difference being the way that they broke things up. I was gonna argue that the new one is a more consolidated version because the, you know with this one you have uh, you've got your you've got your rules. You've got your case book. You've got your quiz book. You've got your clue book. You've got your directory. You've got your newspaper archive, and you've got your map. So seven items. So you could argue over here they've consolidated because you have your rule book, you have your case book, your newspaper, your directory, and your map. So five things instead of seven. That being said, um, there's ten of these, and there's ten of these. So they didn't really consolidate it. They just split it up differently. And it's a matter of preference on uh, which way you like that. So uh, those are the biggest differences between the games. So there we have it. That, my friends, is Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective in 1981-82 and Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective in 2012-2015. As far as the differences between the two, if I had to choose between one or the other, the, to the choice is tough for me because I love the history of old games. I love seeing the way they were made back then, the mistakes that were made. And when I say mistake, I mean combat result tables or CRTs. I think that those were... <laughs> but I will still play them uh, because I, I, I don't know, because I like it. I love the oldness of that. And I, and I do kind of love that old art. And I love that, um, that feel of, you know, somebody put this game in a binder. I don't have any other games in a binder. I, but... The new version is beautiful. Now there are a lot of typos. I think the typos exist. I don't know if they existed in the old one and the new one. Saw some mention online about somebody taking a ride in a carnage, uh, <laughs> which isn't a clue, it's just a mistake. But um, the new version, the way that, I love the bigness of the newspapers. I don't love the smallness of the map. I think the old map is better. And arguably I could just use the old map and play with the new game. No one can stop me from doing that. That said, this is a good game. 
and not enough people know about it. It's fun to play. It does really rack your brain. When you're done, especially the first one when you're just getting your feet wet and figuring out how to play the game, when you're done, you will be like, are you serious? There's no way I would have gotten that. But I think that's why the game lends itself to better playing with multiple people. More brains gives you a better opportunity to get a better score than if you're playing by yourself. There's rules to play competitive, but there's no point in doing that. I think that that would take away from the fun of the game. This is a good game. I recommend it. I think you'd like it if you're into mysteries. It's kind of a choose your own adventure-ish sort of thing, except there's never a the end. And really, even if you don't do good against Holmes, if you want to just take your time and do whatever it takes to solve the mystery to your own liking, you can do that. And there's something to be said for that. So you can do that in this. You can play easy mode. You can ignore how well you're doing versus Holmes and your score and just try to do your best to actually figure out the mystery. And even if you do it that way, I think it would be pretty satisfying in the end to be able to say that you figured it out. So uh, all in all, Sherlock Holmes, Consulted and Detective, very good game. This has been part of the Then and Now series, uh, old and new. Hope you guys liked it. Be sure to subscribe if you're interested. Give it a thumbs up, and I will see you guys on The Geek. Take it easy.